All right, in this video, I want to talk about the imaginary unit. So at one point, people were looking around and saying, wow, well, it's an equation like this. It's just a simple one where we've got x squared plus 1 equals 0. We're trying to figure out the solution you know, to x squared plus 1 equals 0. But we all know if we take a real number and substitute it in for x and we square that real number, that we're going to get a positive number. And uh, a positive number plus 1 is never going to go to 0. Right? So for, for many, many years, uh, there was thought that there's no solution to an equation um, such as this, right? Like these, the numbers that were solutions to this did not exist. So um, at one point, somebody came around and said, you know, let's let's define a new number, and let's call this new number the imaginary unit, right? So they said i equals the square root of negative one. Somebody made that definition. Said, well, what, let's what what happens if we let i b the square root of negative 1, right? Well, if we have i as the square root of negative 1, then if we square both sides, we get i squared equals negative 1. And now we have a number i that when we square it, it gives us a negative number back, negative 1, right? So that was the kind of the beginning. And from here on, um, once the, the, this concept was applied, uh, we've learned that, oh, look, we've just expanded our number system. Our number system just got larger. It's, it's more than just real numbers, and real numbers are just numbers you can find on the number line, right? So now we've got um, these called imaginary numbers, and they're called imaginary numbers because, well, you know, people didn't think they really existed except here, you know, on paper. And they didn't think they existed because, well, they, they didn't have any applications for them, right? The applications for, for them came much later. You know, today we've got applications of, of, of imaginary numbers in like electrical engineering, uh, you know, for currents, uh, in um, analyzing stresses and strains on beams, you know, in, in construction and engineering, uh, doing say, what else we have? Oh, uh, fluid flow around obstacles, studying that, uh, the, uh, you know, it's like a pipe or something. Um, if you go farther in math, uh, you'll learn something about infinite series, and they have a role in infinite series as well. And then there's this uh, new geometry called fractal geometry that's just a few decades old uh, that um, is, is, uses these imaginary numbers um, all the time. So they, they've got a poor name, imaginary numbers, um, but they are very useful. So just because it says imaginary does not mean that they don't exist, right? All right, so let's look at some examples of how to use the imaginary unit. All right, so suppose we have the square root of negative 4. Okay, that's not a real number because we know that there's no real number that we can square that's going to give us negative 4, right? But now we can rewrite this as, say, the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And say, all right, well, the square root of 4 is just 2. We know that. And now we can say that hey, the square root of negative 1, well, that's i. So the square root of negative 4 is just 2i. All right, so what do you think the square root of negative 25 would be? Well, 25 is a perfect square, you know, and we know that's going to go to 5. And then because it's negative under there, that's where the imaginary unit comes into play, and the little, uh, uh, the little i comes out. So we have 5i. So the square root of negative 25 is just 5i. Right? Square root of negative 9 is just 3i. Right? With me? What about, say, the square root of negative 8? Right? Because 8 is not a perfect square. But we can rewrite that right, as the square root of negative 4 times the square root of 2. And the square root of negative 4, well, that's 2i. And the square root of 2 is just the square root of 2. So we can rewrite square root of negative 8 as 2i times the square root of 2. Everybody see that? Right? And if you had something, say, like the square root of negative 7, well, the square root of 7 doesn't simplify down any farther, but we have that negative uh, 7 in there, so that little i thing is going to pop out, and I'm going to write this as i times the square root of 7. I think it's best to put the i in front of the square root sign as opposed to after uh, the square root sign because it can it can look... I mean, this is technically correct right here, but it's easy to get sloppy and accidentally mess up and draw your square root sign like that, where the, or it looks like the i is under the square root sign. And that's not the same thing. 
right? So finding the square root of i will be will be later concepts, right? So to avoid this confusion, I highly encourage you to put the i out in front of the radical, out in front of the square root. All right, let's do one more. Say you had the square root of negative 4 plus the square root of negative 25. All right, well, this goes to 2i, this goes to 5i, and just like we would with like terms, 2i plus 5i is 7i. So the square root of negative 4 plus the square root of negative 25 goes to 7i. Right? Not too bad. All right, so now I want to bring in a couple of properties. All right, so note, if at least one of a or b is a non-negative real number, then we have the following properties. All right, so here's where a and b comes into play. All right, square root of a times b. So if either a or b is a non-negative real number, then we can rewrite that as the square root of a times the square root of b. So that also means that we can go the other way, right? So if we have, for example, say the square root of um, 7 times the square root of negative 2, we can rewrite that as the square root of negative 14, if we so choose. I mean, that's, that is what's happening. That's what this is saying. That either a or b or both are non-negative numbers. But if they're both negative, uh, then we have some issues. We'll talk about that in just a second. All right, the same idea down here with uh, the division, the square root of a over b. Here you go, the square root of a over the square root of b. So those properties that we had before when we were simplifying radicals, um, there was really an extra stipulation on them that was not mentioned, and that's that at least a, at least one of a or b has to be um, a non-negative real number. Right now that we've bringing in these imaginary numbers, we need to be more explicit about our property. Now where this comes in handy is at the following. All right? So we want to simplify the square root of negative 2 times the square root of negative 3. Now we cannot just go square root of negative 2 times negative 3 gives you square root of 6. It's not quite that simple because these, these, um, these aren't real numbers, right? Both of them aren't real numbers. And that property that we just had said at least one of A or B has to be non-negative. Right, at least one, and we don't have that situation over here. All right. So what we're going to do, though, is we can simplify each one of these square roots up. Right. The square root of negative two goes to i times the square root of two, and square root of negative three goes to i times the square root of three. You know, we can change square roots of negative numbers into um, into the i, the imaginary unit and then square roots of positive numbers. And then we just multiply these together, right? We've got i times i, which gives us i squared. And we have square root of 2 times the square root of 3, which now does give us the square root of 6. And then we look and we say, oh, wait, i squared. i squared's what? i squared's negative 1. So this goes to negative 1 times the square root of 6. And this is how we multiply the square root of negative 2 times the square root of negative 3. It goes to negative the square root of 6. Right? So that's, uh, that's pretty much the idea on, on the imaginary unit. We can now simplify square roots of negative numbers. They are called imaginary numbers, and this will lead us into a, um, a new number system called complex numbers, which is the next video. So make sure you go look at it. It's, it expands out our number system. Study well, and please let me know if you have any questions.